students. Um, I am Dr. Smita Pandey. I teach in Department of Gender and Development Studies and today we are going to talk about the topic sexual harassment myths and reality. Now the aim and objective of this lecture to understand the provisions briefly about the sexual harassment, how we dealt in the constitution, how this whole debate emerged and then how the Sexual Harassment Act of 2013 uh, uh, emerged you know, put into place by the several governments and that's the whole history of that. Um, we are also going to understand to that how the myths and reality has come up. The preamble of the Indian constitution says that and I quote, equality of the status and the opportunity must be secured for all its citizens. Equality of every person under the law is granted by article 14 of the constitution. Therefore, a safe workplace is woman's legal right. Indeed, the constitutional doctrine of the equality and the personal liberty is contained in Article 14, 15 and 20 of, 21 of the Indian Constitution. It also ensures a people's right to equal protection under the law, to live a life free from discrimination on any ground and to protect the life of the personal life and the personal liberty. It also reinforced by the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, which we call it CEDAW, that was adopted by UN General Assembly in 1979 and India also ratified it. In an international bill of the rights of the women, the equality of the women and men in terms of human rights and the fundamental freedom and the sphere of such political, economic and social culture and civil rights are mentioned. It emphasizes that discrimination and assault on women's dignity violate the principle of equality and rights. So therefore, sexual harassment constitutes a gross violation of the women's right to equality and dignity. It roots are in patriarchy and its linkages with the perception that men are superior to women and thus any kind or forms of violence against women are acceptable. One would cite the example of the workplace in which sexual harassment and its several forms are seen as an harmless and trivial. Frequently it is excused as a natural quote and quote natural male behavior or again uh, you know, one can uh, quote that harmless partition, you know, and seen as women as enjoying that. So on the contrary to this uh, perception, it causes serious harm and it is also strong manifestation of gender discrimination at workplace. Not only it is an intrusion of the fundamental rights of the woman under Article 191 g of the Constitution of India, which says that to practice any profession or to carry out any occupation, trade or business." Unquote. It eradicates equality and the situation, the dignity and the physical and psychological well-beings of the workers at risk. This leads to poor efficiency and a negative imprint on the lives and livelihood. Further, it deeply rooted in social culture behavioral pattern that leads to gender hierarchy have a tendency to place responsibility on the victims, therefore increasing inequality in the workplace and in the society at large. Though sexual harassment at the workplace has supposed serious magnitude, women do not report the matter to the concerned authorities in the most cases due to fear of retaliation from the harasser. Losing one's livelihood, being stigmatized or losing professional standing and personal reputation. Today across the globe, sexual harassment at the workplace is increasingly understood as a violation of women's right and the forms of violence against women. Indeed, the social construct of the male privileges in the society continues to be used to justify violence against women in the private and public sphere. In essence, sexual harassment is a mirror reflecting male power or women and sustained patriarchal relation. In a society where Violence against women, both subtle and direct, is born out of the patriarchal values women are forced to conform to traditional gender roles. 
These patriarchal values and attitudes of both women and men pose the greatest challenges in the resolution and prevention of the sexual harassment. So therefore workplace sexual harassment in the workplace like other forms of the violence is not something considered as an harmless. It involves serious health, human, economic, social cost which magnitude themselves into overall development indicates of the nation. The sexual harassment of the woman at workplace, prevention prohibition and redressal act of 2013 was enacted to ensure safe working spaces for women and enabling work environment that respect women's right to equality of the status and opportunity. An effective implementation of the act will contribute to the realization of the right to gender equality, life and liberty, equality in working condition everywhere. The sense of security and the workplace will improve women's participation to work, resulting in their economic empowerment and inclusive growth, while the official figure of the women's work participation are very low. Much of the work that women do not even capture in the official data accounts. It is argued that women's overall work participation would be 86.2%. While the official data shows that women's work participation rate is around 25.3% in the rural areas and 14.7% in the urban areas. Estimates indicates that there is a huge workforce of women, therefore there is a need to secure their workplace and entitlement. Given that the 93% of the women workers are employed in the informal sector, they are not protected by the laws. With no laws or the mechanism to protect them, proactive measures are required to make their workplaces safe. It is well recognized that ensuring the safe working condition for the woman leads to positive impact on their participation in the workforce and increase their productivity in turn benefits the nation as a whole. Economically empowered women are the key to the nation's overall development. It can only be achieved if we ensure that women's workplaces in all sectors, entire country have a safe and secure environment for work. They need to know that they can do something about it. However, there are others who may believe that it is a personal matter that needs to be resolved by the people's involvement. In order to change this hierarchy, it is urgent that the measures are taken to change mindsets and attitudes by creating awareness about what constitutes sexual harassment and the steps can be taken to address it. It is important as well as to ensure that the emphasis is on the prevention rather than punitive action. The act among the employer managers and the workers themselves. Frequently women workers, they may face sexual harassment but may not be aware that it is bunch of their rights that there is something they can do about it. In the year 1992, a rural river change agent Banwari Devi was engaged by the state of the Rajasthan as a sad thing to work towards the prevention of the practice of the child marriages. During the course of her work, she prevented the marriage of one of the one year old girl in the community. Her work was met with the antipathy and attracted harassment for, from men of that community. Banwari Devi reported this to the local authority but no action was taken. That omission came at great cost. Banwari was subsequently gang raped by those very men and Banwari Devi's case showing us the ever-present sexual harm to which millions of the working women are exposed across the country, everywhere and every day irrespective of their location. It also shows the extent to which that harm can intensify if nothing is done to check sexual offensive behavior in the workplace. Based on the facts of Banwari Devi's case, a public interest litigation PIL was filed by Vishakha and the other women's group against the state of Rajasthan and Union of India before the Supreme Court of India. It proposed that sexual harassment be recognized as a violation of women's fundamental right to equality and that all the workplaces, establishments, institutions be made accountable and responsible to uphold these rights. In the landmark judgment Vishakha versus State of Rajasthan in the year 1997, Supreme Court of India created legally binding guidelines 
basing it on the right to equality and dignity accorded under the Indian Constitution as well as by the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. So it included a definition of sexual harassment, shifting accountability from individuals to institution, prioritizing prevention, provisions of an innovation redress mechanism. The Supreme Court defined sexual harassment as an any unwelcome, sexually determined physical, verbal or non-verbal conduct. Examples included sex, sexually suggestive remark about women, demands for sexual favors and sexually offensive individuals in the workplace. The definition also covered situation where women could be disadvantaged in her workplace as a result of the threats relating to the employment decision that could negatively affect her working place. And uh, there is not one stagnated you know, uh, definition which one can uh, look at. It has a several uh, meanings, the ways in one which one can actually define that. It places responsibility on employment to ensure that women do not face hostile environment and prohibited intimidation or victimization of those cooperating with an inquiry including affected complainants as well as witnesses. It directs for the establishment of the redressal mechanism in the forms of complaint committee and there are several committees which have been established. It's a mandatory by the Supreme Court. Um, in all the sector, formal and informal sector, there should be a complaint committee for the sexual harassment of the women at workplace. The complaint committees were mandated to be headed by the women employees with not less than half of its member being women and provided for the involvement of the third party person, NGO experts on the issues to prevent any undue pressure on the complainant. The guidelines extended to all kinds of employment from paid to voluntary across the public and private sector. Vishaka established that the international standard law could serve to expand the scope of the Indian constitutional guarantees and fill in the gaps whereby they exist. India's innovative history in tackling the workplace sexual harassment beginning with the Vishaka guidelines and subsequent legislation has given critical visibility to the issues. Workplaces must be now own their responsibility within this context and ensure that women can work in safe and secure places. Now the act which has come up, I will just briefly talk about this, having raised the bar of the responsibility and the accountability of the Vishakha guidelines, the Supreme Court placed an obligation at in workplace institution and those in the position of the responsibility to uphold working women's fundamental right to equality and dignity at workplace. Three key obligations were imposed on the institution to meet the standards namely prohibition, prevention and redress. And in the year uh, 2013, the government of India notified the sexual harassment of the women at workplace prevention prohibition redressal act which is called as 2013 uh, Act of Sexual Harassment at Workplace. It constituted with the Vishakha judgment, the act aspired to ensure women's right to the workplace, equity, equality, freedom and sexual harassment through uh, compliance with the above mentioned three elements. It is important to note that the act provides the civil remedy to the woman and in addition to the other laws that are currently in force. Consequently, any woman who wishes to report the instances of the sexual harassment at workplace has the right to take the recourse of both civil and criminal proceeding, which is one of the very significant, uh, you know, uh, intervention by this act that civil and uh, anyone can actually, you know, the, those who have been harassed can approach to civil and criminal proceedings. So let us discuss the myth and reality about the sexual harassment and I would put into a dialogue form what myth is and uh, uh, what reality is. The myths are the victims provide sexual assault when they dress provocatively or they act in the promocious manner. Now the reality is that rape and sexual assaults are the crime of the violence and control that uh, stem from the person's determination to exercise power over another. Neither provocative dress nor promiscuous behavior are uh, invitations for unwanted sexual activity. Forcing someone to 
uh, engage in a non-consensual sexual activity is a sexual assault, uh, regardless of the way that person dresses or acts. Second myth is that if, I mean there are a number of myths but I would just try to put it in a dialogue form to make you understand, you know, uh, which are a very prominent myths about it. The myth is that if person goes to someone's room or the house or goes to a bar, uh, she or he assumes the uh, risk of the sexual assault. If something happens later, she or he cannot claim that she or he was raped or sexually assaulted because she or, or he should have known that not to go to those places. The reality is this assumption of the risk wrongfully places the responsibility of the offender's action with the victims. Even if the person went voluntarily to someone's home or the room and consented to, uh, to engage in some sexual activity, it does not serve the blanket consent for, this, uh, for all sexual activity. When in doubt, if the person uh, is comfortable with an elevated level of the sexual activity, stop and ask. When someone says no or stop, that means stop. A sexual activity forced upon another without void consent is a sexual assault. The myth is that it is not a sexual misconduct. It happens after drinking or taking drugs. Now the reality is that being under the influence of the alcohol or drugs is not an invitation for sexual activity. A person under the influence does not cause others to assault her or him. Others choose to take the advantage of the situation and sexually assault her or him because she or he is in vulnerable position. A person who is incomplicated due to the influence of the alcohol or drug is not able to uh, say the consent to the sexual activity. Now the next myth is that most sexual assaults are committed by the stranger. It's not a rape if the people uh, involved know each other. Now the reality is that most of the sexual assaults and the rapes are committed by someone the victim knows and it's a fact. A study of the sexual victimization of the college woman showed that about 90% of the victims knew the person who sexually victimized them. Most often a boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, classmate, friend, acquaintance um, or co-worker sexually victimize the person. It's important to remember that sexual assault can occur in both heterosexual same gender relationship also. Now the another myth is rape can be avoided if women avoid dark allies or other dangerous places where strangers might be hiding or lurking. The reality is that rape and sexual assault can occur at any time in many places to anyone. The myth is that a person who has really been sexually assaulted will be hysterical and this is something which is commonly used. Uh, the reality is that the victims of the sexual violence exhibit a spectrum of the responses to the assault which can include calm, hysteric, withdrawal, anxiety, anger, apathy, denial and shock. Being sexually assaulted is a very traumatic experience. Reaction to the assaults and the length of the time needed to process through the experience vary with each person. There is no right way to react to being sexually assaulted. Assumptions about the way a victim should act may be detrimental to the victims because each victim scopes in a different ways. Now the myth is that all sexual assault victims will report the crime immediately to the police if they do not report. Uh, report it or delay the reporting it, then they must have changed their minds after it happened, uh, wanted revenge or don't want to look like they were sexually active. The reality is that there are many reasons why sexual assault victims may not report the assault to the police or the campus official. It is not easy to talk about being sexually assaulted and can feel very shameful. The experience of retilting, um, what happened may, may cause the person to relieve the trauma. Another reason for delaying a report or not making a report is a fear of retaliation by the offenders. There is also a fear of being blamed 
not being believed and being required to go through judicial proceeding. Just because a person does not report a sexual assault does not mean it did not happen. Now the myth is that only young pretty women are assaulted. The reality is that the belief that only young pretty women are sexually assaulted stems from the myth and sexual assault is based on the sex and physical attraction. Sexual assault is a crime of the power and control. Offenders often choose people whom they perceive as the most vulnerable to attack or over whom they believe they can assert power. Men and boys are always sexually assaulted as well as the person with the disability also. At the same time, women also been assaulted. So assumption about the typical victim might lead others not to report the assault because they do not fit the stereotype typical victims. Now the myth is that it's only rape if the victim puts up uh, fight and resist. Many states, uh, in the many states do not require the victim to resist in order to charge the offender with the rape or sexual assault. Those who do not resist may feel if they do so, they will anger uh, their attack and attacker resulting in many serves injury, many more injuries also. So many assault uh, uh, experts say that victims should trust their uh, insti uh, intuition and instinct and, uh, and do uh, what they believe will most likely keep them alive. Not fighting or resisting an attack does not uh, uh, equate the consent. The myth is that someone uh, can only be sexually assaulted if a weapon was involved. The reality is that in many cases of sexual assault, a weapon is not involved. The offenders often uses physical strength, physical violence, intimidation, threats or combination of these tactics to overpower the victim. Although the presence of the weapon while committing the assault may result in a higher penalty or the criminal charge, the absence of the weapons does not mean that the offenders cannot be held criminally responsible for sexual assault. The myth is that the sexual harassment is rare. The reality is that sexual harassment is extremely widespread. It touches the lives of 40 to 60 percent, I would even call it that it is more. Uh, working women and the similar proportion of the female students in the college and the university. The myth is that sexual harassment not only happens to the women and it is uh, perpetuated only by the men. Reality that both in women can be victims on perpetrator of the sexual harassment. In addition, sexual harassment may occur between members of the same sex also. The myth is that the seriousness of the sexual harassment has been exaggerated and most so-called harassment is really trivial and harmless flirtation. The reality is that sexual harassment can be devastating. Studies indicate that most harassment has nothing to do with flirtation or sensual sexual or uh, societal interest. Rather, it is offensive, often uh, frightening and insulting. Research shows that survivors are often forced to leave school or job to avoid harassment. Many experiences, serious psychological and health related problems are part of that. So uh, through this that one would try to understand that how myth and realities are working. Uh, some of the myths are like this that many victims make up and report stories of the sexual harassment to get back at their employee or other who have angered them. The reality is that research shows that less than 1% of the complaints are false. In fact, survivors rarely file complaints even when they are justified in doing so. The myth is that women who are sexually harassed generally provoke harass harassment by the way they look, dress and behave. Harassment does not occur because of women's dress provocative or you know initiate sexual activity in the hope of getting promoted, advancing their careers. Studies have found that victims of the sexual harassment vary in the physical appearance type of dress, age and behavior. The only one thing that they have common is that 99% of them are female and uh, therefore it's, it's been very important to understand that if you ignore uh, the harassment, again this is a myth, if you ignore harassment it will go away. 
the reality it will not the research has shown that simply uh, simply ignoring the behavior of a is ineffective harasser generally will not stop on their own ignoring such behavior may even be seen as an agreement or an uh, encouragement so therefore that if in case anyone have been harassed they must report to the several bodies they should make sure that the complete committees has to be established wherever one is working in in terms of all genders i'm talking about and i think let me conclude this lecture by saying that through this lecture what you, what i'm trying to argue is that that how this act emerged and you know it's a 17 years of the struggle that sexual harassment at workplace 2013 emerged after the vishakha guideline came at the same time there are a number of provisions which constitution has given to all the citizens of india it all men women and all other genders to work to live a life with dignity freedom and to work fearlessly uh, we also try to understand through this lecture what are the myths and reality and uh, before i conclude that i just want to acknowledge the two important sides where i'm drawing this idea is the 2015 booklet which the government of india produced it's a handbook on the sexual harassment of the woman at workplace uh, and also that uh, uh, it's important that the golden west college from the abroad also brought out some of the common trends and the myth and reality there are endless myth and reality which but one has to engage with this debate constantly to fight against the equality thank you